Hello comic book junkies, it's the Frog Queen here, and today I've got another comic book creator interview. I'm talking to Tyler Jenkins today, and we're going to be talking about Grass Kings, which is his most recent series on Boom Studios, with number issue number six coming out this coming Wednesday. Issue six wraps up the very first story arc. You may notice some issues with this recording. I've been using a new recording device and I'm not super happy with it. So some of the uh, interview is a little bit choppy. Um, I also haven't figured out how to properly record uh, the audio to optimize it. So this being my first interview back with an entirely new setup, it is a little rough. But uh, what Tyler has agreed to do is answer your guys' questions. So we're going to do a follow-up interview um, in a week or two, and I'm going to ask him the questions that you guys have about Grass Kings or any of his other works, and uh, that'll be that. Therefore, uh, we'll make up for this not-so-great recording, and by that time, I'll have figured out uh, how to record Skype calls a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> so, without further ado, here's Tyler. How are you doing today? <clears throat> I'm doing good. And you are? Not bad. It's been a, a, busy, a busy day for me, personally, but it's been good, I think. Um, no. I wonder if we could just uh, dive, should we just dive right in, or...? Sure, sounds good to me. That's what I usually do. Um, I thought I'd start with uh, maybe Grass Kings, of course, since that's what's being put out right now. And cool. I, I noticed when I was on the Boom site, I've been reading it since it started, of course, but I noticed on the Boom site, um, it didn't say specifically that it's an ongoing. So I was wondering, is it is it an ongoing? Or is there an Sort end? of. There is an end. Um, I think, I don't know, I've talked to somebody about this before, but... I'm not a fan myself of working on projects that don't have an end. Um, like just open-ended ongoings have never really interested me. So there definitely is a distinct end. Um, um, and we've planned three arcs. So there's definitely going to be three arcs. Okay. Wow. Okay. That's, that's interesting. So that actually, if there's three arcs, we're still in the first story arc. So this could end up yes. being quite long, quite lengthy then. In between 15 and 18 issues, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Oh, awesome. No, that's wicked. Um, how does it feel yeah. to be kind of back on a longer project again after, you know, Peter Pendergast has ended, or Pendergast has ended, and uh, I know you, you've done quite a few uh, kind of mini stories in between everything. Um, I really like mini stories, but being on a longer <clears throat> um, series, what I like the most is you it becomes easier and easier to draw and easier and easier to get those characters to act the way you want them to act because you get you know even though in Peter some of those characters never gelled as far as visually with me ever I struggled with them I knew what I wanted them to look like but I didn't I couldn't bring them to the page the way I wanted to whereas in Grass Kings all those characters are how I want them to look um, I think it was just a quite, uh, you know, just purely because of lack of skill to be able to execute the way I wanted to execute. But that's what I like about being on a longer series is being able to really get into those characters visually and having to become easier to draw so that it's it's very um, it's very easy to act with them. You know what I mean? Uh, totally. I mean. <laughs> I'm not a very experienced artist, but I totally understand your perspective. Um, yeah. But how did you go about like even starting this project? Because you're doing Grass King here developed with uh, Matt Kent, and I'm wondering like how much I've seen you've written the story. How much of the actual character design and how you guys work together to create these characters? How uh, what was your full contribution, and, and how did you kind of develop them at all? Um, these characters actually were, it's hard now because we've been in it for a while now, like we're talking about it for a year. So to exactly break out exactly who did what now is a trick, but I know that the three brothers, um, Robert Asher and Bruce and Pitt, um, 
pinball potentially. I can't remember. But Robert Asher and Bruce were pretty fully developed before me and Matt were working on it together. Okay. So I, those guys, that's where I started putting the series together with, with those three three brothers. And Maria was in it, but her role um, and how how great of a character she became was purely after the, like, like Matt bringing that character to life. To me, she was not, not a throwaway character by any means, but I certainly focused very much on um, the three brothers. That's where it started. So a lot of these characters were there, sort of. I think Pike, I'm pretty sure Matt totally came up with Pike, um, but the other characters, uh, they were they were ahead of time. The brothers were definitely there ahead of time, and then everything else sort of fell into place afterwards. Okay. As Matt put them together. Nice. Sorry, my machine thing cut off some of that, so I fixed it up. But yeah, I'll have to be recording this into like little five-minute breaks because I didn't realize I'm still on the trial version of this stupid recording device. Uh -oh. I'm now kind of angry right, right. though. Um, so in every couple minutes, I'll have to like stop and cut and then record again, which is really annoying. But oh, sure. I'll, I'll warn you, it has a timer. <laughs> it, at the very least, it has a timer, so I can actually tell when it's going to cut out, but I was kind of like, what the hell is that okay. thing that just popped up on my screen? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> story as well. Um, yes. Or, yes, okay, so you're kind of like co-writer as well for Grass Kings. Um, for the first arc, uh, what's really interesting is the first arc, the, the narrative thrust and the intention of what was happening about the loss of the daughter and him dealing with that stuff like that that was what it was about before matt came and became involved that's where it started um <clears throat> and and then when we started talking that's when humbert came in and and as maria's husband and that her running from her her generically running from her, an abusive relationship i think was there before but what it it becoming such an important part of the story that was definitely all Matt. But this first arc is very much an execution of the original intention of what was, you know, what I wanted it to say before Matt was involved. And you'll see what's really, except for any of the, the crime elements, which is weird because I love crime stuff and I, I would tend to put that in everything, but there was very little of that when I first came up with the idea. But as Matt has become involved, or as Matt started writing it, he added all that crime stuff. And as you'll see, because the issue, or arc two and arc three did not exist really as a thought. Yep. Again, hopefully that totally was okay and everything. Anyway, sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> you were explaining to me. No problem. About, uh, oh, yeah. Was, sorry. The, so the first arc is sort of an execution of that original the original idea um, with, of course, you know, tons of awesome stuff and, you know, a crime and mystery related stuff that Matt has totally added to that. And then as you'll see, as we go into arc two and three, it, sh it, not a shift, but it becomes much more now Matt driving the plot from like, because it didn't exist before. Right. So it's him very much driving it in a crime direction, it's fantastic. So each each arc will have a very, very different flavor. I mean, it'll all still very much fit together, be the same characters, but the the focus of it will shift, and it's, it's very interesting how the focus shifts between the arcs. Yeah, it's cool. Nice. Oh my god, this thing's not working. There it goes, okay. <laughs> uh, that's awesome, okay. Um, I don't, are we in your studio right now? Yes. Cool. Oh, you froze. So you're you're perma frozen like this right now, which is kind of weird. <laughs> yes, we're in my studio, drawing tables and light tables and stuff behind me and bookshelves. Right. No. Okay. <laughs> I can tell you what TV show it's in. It's in on that TV show. Um, it's called Damnation. It's a Netflix original that's coming. I don't know when it's being released, but I'm just playing an extra. Oh, it's fun. Background. I didn't even yeah. know that uh, things that there was a lot of film in Alberta. To be honest with you, 
Well, um, I think, I mean, there used to be, and then all the, a lot of the tax credits for filmmaking got cut. Yeah. But I think some of that's being reinstituted now. Oh, okay. Um, so I think that's why stuff is coming back here. I hope hope it is anyway. Yeah. I know Halifax has taken a, a very big hit on that, um, which is unfortunate. A lot of my friends in the film industry yeah. uh, lost their jobs or had to leave for work elsewhere. Some people even went to the U.S., um, although I yeah. think they're insane for going to the U.S. I want, well, um, thank you so much for doing this. Um, I know it's kind no of problem. difficult to coordinate. I hope to God that this recorded all right. I will let you know immediately <laughs> if it if it didn't, and then maybe we can try and do a take two with a better uh, program. But yeah, I, I do feel very badly that it wasn't more professional because it used to be used yeah, to have no this problem. great program. <laughs> no problem. No problem at all. Uh, but I look forward to the next uh, uh, next issue um, of Graph King. Um, I'm really excited to see how it wraps up. Cause I, I'm also something I wanted to ask you actually. Now that I think about it, was um, the history sequences when it kind of shows you bits of history from the area. Yes. I'm always I don't understand the significance of it yet, and it makes me wonder if there's something supernatural at play with like the whole the lake swallowing people and everything, or or what exactly it's alluding to. Does that get wrapped up or unraveled in any way? Not really. Um, those are mostly for context. Okay. Um, mostly to contact, historical context of the cycle of violence and the recurring themes that we're touching on, you know, sort of saying, you know, the story's not exactly new. That's sort of the point, right? Okay. Um, but there's no, there's not, no supernatural Because it is very eerie, stuff. and, you know, there is that kind of underlying ghost yes. thing, especially with the main character being so um, um, kind of out of it due to his years of alcohol abuse. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Okay, I just, I had to, I had to ask that because I was just like, I'm not sure where this is going. It's cool, but I just, I don't know where, where it's going. So, uh, that's interesting. But uh, I will let you go. Well, I'm interested um, to hear your. What's that? I'm interested to hear your impressions. I'm interested to hear your impressions when it wraps up this yeah. sixth, the next issue. I definitely want to put yeah. a video about um, the first arc as a whole. Okay, cool. That'd be great. Yeah, I wanted to yeah I'd like to hear what you visual, think. But I thought, oh well, I might as well wait till the end because I had kind of missed that initial. Um, uh, issue to do the video in that time. I was just like busy that week. I did to get it done. But, right, right, right. Uh, thank yeah. you so much for this. I hope to talk to you more in the future. Um, hopefully with a better Def recording program. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. That'd be great. All right. Have a great afternoon. You too. All right. <laughs> talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Bye.